Alright, it's time for intermediate lesson number 11. We're going to be talking about state machines. So let's get this boat on the river. Uh, we're going to need you to uh, download some garbage here. This garbage. Tutorial 11 at the same bat time, same bat channel. That's the uh, the forum. Uh, I'm going to use, first of all, I'm going to unzip this tic-tac-toe-a folder. But mm, I don't think you guys need to follow along unless you really want to. You can just watch me. You don't have to type this bullshit in. So yeah, we're going to revisit our old friend, the tic-tac-toe game from lesson whatever. Hope you guys remember it, because I don't. That's a lie. I've actually, uh, this is my third time trying to record this lesson, quote unquote. So I'm pretty sick of it, actually. I just want to get this bullshit over with. So let's do it. Um, so yeah. What did we do last time? What is this? What is this bullshit? Let's run it. It's always a good way to start out. <clears throat> it's always a tic-tac-toe game. Use the arrow keys, you put down your mark. The AI puts its mark down. And you try to win. Simple enough. Uh, but, here's the thing. In lesson 12, uh, we had random AI. Whereas, if you look at this AI here, it's not super random, it's it's trying to do something. It tries to win. So this one has some uh, logical AI attached to it. Let's find collapse this bullshit. There we go. And that, that was kind of like a homework or a challenge thing. Although I never explained it. And I'm not gonna explain it. I am not gonna explain the logic uh, behind the AI move code here. The code that actually calculates which square the AI plays on. I'm not gonna tell you guys that shit. I did it before in the other tries of making this video and it just slowed the shit down all oh, Christ hell. Damn it. So if you guys really want to know how to make a smart tic-tac-toe AI, you can look at the code and if that doesn't make sense, I guess if I get enough requests on the forum, like 40 or 50 people, maybe I'll make a video, but I don't think so. I don't think it's necessary. It's not important. What is important is uh, the, other, the, uh, the other challenge I gave you guys, which was, I mean, if you look the, w the way the user plays it has to the user has to move their cursor and then put their mark down but the AI's mark just appears instantaneously and so to further enhance the sense of immersion the uh, the the what's what's the thing what's the word I'm looking for the illusion that you're playing with an actual uh, another human being as opposed to just a computer you might want to have the computer also have to move the cursor and then put its mark down. So that was the challenge I gave you. Animate the computer's, the AI's turn. Uh, so, and I know some of you have tried that and I've seen some attempts and I've seen some failures. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys what peop what a lot of people tend to uh, attempt to do and fail miserably at because that will help us understand the the genius of the proper solution better or whatever so here's uh, a flow chart of what people often consider as a solution to the problem Cursor X, this is cursor X here, right here. No, I didn't want to do that. Undo. 
Stop it. Christ, deselect. Now I'm super pissed off. Okay. Let's try this again. Mm-hmm. Where's my pen? I'm gonna draw on this motherfucker. So let's just get our uh, nomenclature straight. This here is uh, the exposition x position of the cursor. Uh, this is the y position of the cursor. This is the calculated uh, place where the AI wants to move. The x position of the uh, move and the y position of the desired move. And what you think is, okay, you just um, simple process. Fucker. St oh. Okay, let's try this again. Let's see if I got my window focused. I do. So what you want to do is uh, you check to see if your cursor is less than where you want it to be. And if it's less than you where you want it to be, you just move it up. Or in this case, I think it would be to the right. You move it to the right. And if it's not less than where it is, then is it too far? And if it's too far, you pull it back. And if uh, if that's fine, well then let's see what else. We could do the same for Y. Is Y not far enough? Push it up. Is it too far? Push it back. And once you have it all set up, where X and Y are at the correct position, then you just move on. You might put in here, uh, you know, oh, place mark and that's the idea that you'll be going for so let's look at the code for that can't go wrong right that's a pretty simple solution seems fine to me yuck first of all let's just take a quick overview of the uh, tic-tac-toe game I'm not gonna go over any of these functions just the main function compose frame so in this one we do something that I tell you guys not to do which is we do the, the logic and the drawing in the same function. Bad, but we didn't, uh, we didn't know any better at the time. That's the excuse. So here, um, the first thing we do is we check for victory. And if there's no victory, and if it's not a draw, then uh, we do a simple branch here. If the, play, if the active player is the user, in this uh, tic-tac-toe program, the user is always the X, right? So if the active player is equal to X, then we just handle the user input. So every frame that's called, we jump into here, we handle any user input. And when the user input handle function results in the turn being turned over to O's turn, the active player equals O, then the next frame, when we enter this compose frame function, we're going to skip this handle user input and we're going to instead do AI turn mm, getting a snot build up there too much information so an AI do instantaneous <clears throat> what we do is we um, we calculate the next move the next place where we want to play and <clears throat> when we call AI get move smart that actually sets AI move X and AI move Y. It sets these variables to the coordinates of uh, the place where the AI wants to play. Now the actual AI get move smart function, we're not going to go into there. We just It's just a black box. We call it and it um, sets up our AI move X and AI move Y variables. Then we set square state with uh, the coordinates and the the current player which is O the computer so that just puts the mark on the board and then we end turn so it's all instantaneous so let's uh, let's try implementing this flowchart in the uh, in the code here <clears throat> and if we do so it'll look something like this ta-da
Yeah. Let's see. Uh, what does it look like? Okay, so the while loop represents these these uh, little blocks here. <clears throat> And uh, if I did it right, we should be able to build. Oh, worked on the first try. So let's see what that gives us. We're going to put down our mark. Bam! AI marks comes down instantaneously, but it did move the cursor for us. So it's a step in the right direction. But it got there instantaneously. And you might think, well, shit! You know, computers are super fast, and it's just moving it so fast that our eye can't catch up. So we gotta slow it down sometime. So you might uh, look on the internet, and you might come up with something like this. Or you might think to yourself, all I gotta do is insert a pause after every time I move the cursor. And before I put down the, uh, the mark, and then it should be visible to the human eye. And you might look on the interwebs and you might find a uh, a little function called sleep. And that lets you just pause the current executing thread, or basically just your program, for uh, X number of milliseconds. So let's, let's give her uh, a third of a second between moves. I'll put 400 milliseconds. And we'll just add the, that into here, to here, to here. And uh, we'll add one more here. Just for good measure. So. Now it should be perfect, right? Nothing could possibly go wrong. Again, put down our mark. And bam. Bam. So, again, it just jumped there. It paused for a while and then jumped, but there was no animation, right? It should have gone from here to here and then put down its mark. But it didn't. And the reason for that is, I guess if you've made it this far in the tutorials, you probably already figured it out. But um, <clears throat> this is all happening in a single frame of animation, right? We enter uh, the do AI turn in a in a one frame, and we do all the uh, we move the cursor over, do all the, the the waiting and the sleeping, and then putting the thing down all in a single frame. So all that uh, all these sleep functions, all they serve to do is to delay. Uh, the time between two frames to really long but you don't get to see any of this motion in between because it's not captured in a frame you're just stalling the animation for X number of milliseconds which is not good so this whole uh, approach here this linear flowchart approach is not gonna cut the mustard my friends not at all. So we need a new way of handling uh, situations like this. What do you think it's going to be? Take a guess. Yeah, state machines. So, what's a freaking state machine? And how is it different from a flowchart? These are good questions. Let's find the answers for them. Well, here is a picture of a super simple state machine. It's a state machine that represents a basic turnstile, like you would find in a subway. It uh, prevents people from entering the subway without paying or entering their ticket first. So you have a turnstile. It has two states, the locked state, and the unlocked state. It starts off in the locked state. You can tell by this little uh, circle here, that's where it starts off. Uh, if you push it in the locked state, it remains locked and you can't pass through. 
if you enter a coin into it, it, it uh, transitions to the unlocked state. And then if you push it when it's in the unlocked state, you can pass through. But by passing through, it returns to the locked state. So that's how it works. Someone enters a coin, and then they push their way through. Another person enters a coin, and they push through. Uh, somebody forgets to put the coin in, and they bump into the turnstile and get nutted. Right? Or some idiot puts a coin in, and then forgets he puts a coin in, and puts another coin in. And it eats his second coin, remaining in the unlocked state. And he pushes through, and it gets locked again. That's how a turnstile works. And that's how a very basic state machine works. Um... Now, the thing about a state machine is it's not a single process from start to finish like a, uh, a flowchart is. How do I uh, say, that? say this in a better way? A flowchart, you come in here and you, you go through here and all you're doing is you're, you're somewhere in this flowchart the whole time from this point to this point you're doing something in this flowchart you're doing an action or you're well let's see here bah. you're looping through here or you're waiting you're stuck in this flowchart until you get to the end you're not doing anything but what's in this flowchart but a state machine is it's more ah, stop it well that's good it's bigger it's more like parallel. So if you're in the locked state, you're going to stay in the locked state until you do an action of either coin or push and that will cause a transition. But you can do other things. You could be like talking on your phone or uh, hitting on the person behind you. I don't know. Just the state machine describes what's happening with the uh, in this case with the turnstile but when you're not doing when you're not putting in a coin or pushing you could be doing other things it doesn't preclude any other actions right the state machine only um, deals with uh, events that trigger state transitions and anything else it just ignores so it's event driven Whereas, uh, where's my, where's my garbage? Whereas flowchart is, um, what we might call, it's more like polling. If you're, if you want to think of it as an in, uh, input output paradigm, it's event versus polling. It's always going, always running, always doing something in the flowchart. Whereas in the state machine, here it is. Give me my frickin' state machine. That's the wrong state machine. Give me this one. There you go. In the state machine, it's mostly just sitting around waiting until something happens. Until someone puts a coin in or someone tries to push the turnstile. It's just kind of, you know, just chilling out. And while it's chilling out, you can be doing other things. Like, for example, if you have a state machine for your game, while your state machine is chilling out, you can be, you know, displaying frames of animation. Whereas in a flowchart situation, there's no room for displaying frames in between these points. It's all just work, 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 work until you're done. And that is why flowcharts are mean. No, state machines are going to work for us because they chill out. They're, you know, they're relaxed. They're cool guys. You, wanna, you might want to party with them sometime. So, yeah, what am I going to talk about next? Let me consult my thingamajigger over here. Flowchart is like a control freak, and it shows everything that's happening. Everything that's going to happen between here and here is in this flowchart. And it precludes anything else. Whereas, in a state machine, a million things can happen between transitions. Tons of other shit can be happening on the side or together, or simultaneously. But uh, we're only concerned with the state machine. 
in a state machine diagram. And that's the difference. And uh, don't be like freaked out if you don't super understand state machines at the end of this. Because we're going to be doing state machines a ton in, in the beginning. You can use state machines for a lot of different shit in a game. You can use it for AI, right? The different states of an AI, like it can be uh, patrolling. And then when it sees the player, it can be in a um, pursue, pursue or search mode, right? And when it uh, approaches the player, then it can enter into a combat mode. And those are all states in a state machine. And also, like, just the overall game, you can uh, model it as a state machine. You have the uh, the title screen, which is a state, and then you have the actual gameplay, which is a state. And maybe some other states, like when you switch into, um, like, a status screen. That's another state of the game as a whole. And the animation of a a guy on a platform could also be modeled as a state machine. Hint, hint. Like you're in the jumping state or the running state or the falling state. And depending on which state you're in, uh, the actions you're going to take in the processing of that sprite and its position are going to change. Or not the sprite, but the agent. To get my terminology correct. But in this case, the state machine is going to be for the animation of the AI's turn in a tic-tac-toe game extravaganza. So let's do that right now. And here is where I close the uh, this project, which was tic-tac-toe A, and open up tic-tac-toe B. And here is where you might also want to open up tic-tac-toe B. Because there's going to be stuff in here that I do want you to follow through with. And we're going to be coding in this one. So let's open this mofro up. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that I got rid of some garbage here because I just wanted to simplify it. And the second thing you'll notice is that the do AI turn here is like way more complicated. It's got stuff. It's got a big switch statement chilling out and uh, being big. It's a big dumb switch. So, first thing let's do. Let's do the first thing we do, which is we run it. Use it. Put that down there. And you see now we are in full-on hardcore animation mode here. I'm gonna put my thing down here. So the AI, uh, it pauses for a little bit, then it moves the cursor, then it, then a slight pause, and then it places its mark down. That's how I made it work. And a winner is O. Oh, good times. So you might be wondering how this works. Well, it's a state machine. So to explain it, it would be good to have a state diagram which conveniently I have right here. So here is a state diagram. It's the style of state diagram that I'm going to be using when I diagram states, believe it or not. Let's explain it. Well, you got these little boxes here. These are the different states that the state machine can be in. And I'm gonna burp. Ugh. Tastes like peanut butter. These arrows are the transitions between states or you know within a state. A state can transition to itself. That's perfectly fine. And the labels beside the arrows describe um, the details of the transition. So here we have the first thing in a transition is the trigger, the thing that causes the transition to happen. And if you notice, the trigger in every single transition here is frame because transitions happen on new frames. So when there's a new frame of animation, a transition will be triggered. Maybe. 
I say maybe, and we'll get to that a little bit later. The slash thing here denotes um, side effects, things that happen on the transition. We didn't have this in the simple uh, state diagram that I showed you before, but it's a thing. Believe me, it's a thing. I'm going to prove it to you because I found something on the interwebs that vindicates me. This is a state, finite state machine that I found on the interwebs and it has uh, triggers and a slash and then it has side effects, things that happen uh, on this transition. So that's, this is a valid way of writing a state machine. I am not just making shit up or pulling it out of my ass. So you have, um, mm, you have a trigger and then you have side effects. So we start off in the calculation state and in the calculation state, uh, when a new frame happens, we call get next move, which is we calculate the next move. And it also sets up the, uh, the move variables, AI move X and AI move Y. And we set the timer to 60 because we're going to need a timer, right? We need some way of keeping track of how long we have to wait before we move the cursor or between moves of the cursor. So we set the timer up to 60 and we enter the think state. This is the animation state that where the where we're pretending that the AI is thinking. The AI has, AI has already calculated its move in an instant in the calculation state. But now we're going to make a uh, a little pretend show of thinking. So we enter the thinking state. Timer has been set to 60. What's the next transition? Well, we can transition to the move state on frame but there's this little pipe here, this little, sl this little uh, vertical line. And what that means is there's a condition on this transition. Yeah. So it transitions on the frame, but only on the condition that the timer is less than or equal to zero. But since we've just entered, timer is equal to 60. We're not going to enter this one. What's the other transition here? Well, it's also on frame, but it's on timer greater than zero. And if timer is greater than zero, we want to decrement timer. So this is basically the countdown, the tick tock of the timer clock. And when it reaches zero, then we transition here. We're done thinking. It's time for action. And so now the timer is at zero. Where are we going to transition? We have tons of self transitions, but they all have different conditions. This one transitions when the timer is greater than zero. And it's just our normal uh, countdown. But our timer is already zero because it was uh, at zero when we transitioned. So we're not going to do this one. What about this one? Well, this one is if the timer is less than or equal to zero, which it is, and if our cursor x is less than our move x. So this is our condition for moving the cursor to the right. So if the cursor is... Uh, to the left of where we want it to be in the X position then we move it to the right and we set the timer to 15 so we wait for 15 clocks so let's say that's what happens the other case is if the cursor is too far to the right and then we move it back and then we wait so we keep moving and waiting until cursor is equal to move X if it's at the right X position Right, that's the third thing that can happen. So when the timer runs out, when it's at zero, you have three possible transitions depending on where cursor X is at in relation to where we want it to be. And when it's at the place we want it to be, we're done with our move X state, we move to the move Y. And we do the same shit, but we do it for the Y position of the cursor. Checking to see if it's at where we want it to be and we just keep looping, we keep rolling, rolling, rolling. And then, when the y is at where we want it to be, cur x equal to cur y. Timer less than or equal to zero. Uh, I did the wrong notation here. I fucked up my notation. It should be an and, right? And here. Whatever. Doesn't matter. So after um, y is at the correct position, we set the timer to 30. And we enter the placement state, which is just a slight pause before we actually put the mofro down. And we just 
count down the pause and then we when the timer is count down we do here but I forgot to add one thing here there's a side effect here which is actually place the motherfucking O on the board motherfucker I forgot that part which is kind of the really important part but whatevs you place the thing on the board and then we call end turn so those are the side effects of leaving the placement state which is finishing the uh, computer's turn and that's the whole state machine for animating the computer's turn but you see these transitions and shit they happen they are triggered by frame um, what is it called frame changes or a flip in the animation right but while the state machine is you know just chilling out the game engine is still running it's still churning out animation frames and it's just sending messages to the state machine here's this here's a picture of the state machine it's it's a it's a gear that's the fucking that's the most fucked up gear i've ever seen but it's a gear that represents machine so our 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 uh, engine is running on the side and when shit happens it sends messages to the state machine and the state machine goes oh i got to do some shit but the state machine does not stop the engine from doing its shit they're just kind of running well logically in our heads they're running in parallel not really but that's that's the that's the uh, that's the paradigm I'm sure I'm not using the word paradigm correctly but whatever so let's take a look at the code we uh, we implement this state machine in a uh, as a switch state so we have a um, <clears throat> what is it called Grr. AI state. There's a uh, an enumeration called AI state, and it has one, two, three, four, five values for the five states. And depending on the value of a state variable, which is stored in game, the kind of processing that we do when we enter the do AI turn, which is this is the state machine function. This processes the state machine what happens here will uh, change depending on stuff yeah now this the state machine is always called on every frame and that is why I modeled it such that the trigger is a new frame because that is what triggers calling this function because it's called every frame so here we have get next move set the timer to 60 and set the state to think and here we have get next move, set the timer to 60, and transition to think. So it's, you know, it's the same thing, just in code here. In the think one, we have an if statement here. If the timer is less than zero, transition. If not, minus the timer. Decrement the timer. That's what I meant to say. And here again, we have two different uh, transitions, and they depend on the timer here. It's a condition of the transition. And for the move X, we have the main condition, which is whether the timer is uh, less than or equal to zero. And that divides uh, our transitions between here or one of these three. So first of all, it determines whether we're going to do one of these three or whether we're going to do this one here. And after we figure that out, then we got to check to see uh, whether we're going to decrement the cursor, increment the cursor, or transition to the next state, which is removing Y. And so on and so forth. That's how we implement that shit. You can look over this uh, state machine. Make sure you understand it, because it's not that complicated. And uh, it's, it's good to know how to implement a state machine as a uh, switch statement. But that's fine that's good but it's not what I want to do here I have an ulterior motive for introducing state machines and that is that I want a good ass excuse to uh, teach 
object oriented shit to teach um, polymorphism and all that happy horse shit. So, state machines can also be implemented uh, with polymorphic classes. And that is what I'm going to uh, describe next. Yeah, I'm just reading my notes here, making sure I didn't miss anything. So, how can we fuck this shit up? We're going to make it way, com way more complicated than it has to be. But it's going to be a good lesson. It's going to be good times. We're going to have fun. I'm, I'm probably lying to you through my teeth, but you believe me, right? So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this video and I'm going to put my shirt in the washing machine. Then I'm going to come back and hit you with some with some fly code. All right, let's see if we can fuck some shit up. Now. <clears throat> uh, let me think here. So make sure that you understand the uh the state machine how it works because if you don't understand that then you're gonna have trouble understanding this because we're gonna we're gonna flip side it now we're gonna go in a different direction so how would you implement the state machine using classes well here's how you do it you make a um, a base state class now in your uh, game object this is, a, this is an object of the game. You're going to have a a pointer to your state class. But here's where it gets interesting. Your state class is actually, it's not a concrete class, it's abstract. Your concrete classes inherit from state. And they, they represent the different states that your state machine can be in. Like for example, you have the calc state class, which inherits from state and you have the move x and you have the place class and all the other bullshit classes so you have a pointer to state but it's actually going to be pointing to one of the one of these and when you do a state transition what you do is you create like let's say you're in the calc uh, state and you want to transition to the move state, which is not possible, but let's say you're trying it anyways. What you do is you create a move state object, and then you make this pointer point to it, and then you delete the calc state object. It's no more. Go away. We don't want you anymore. And that's how you do state transitions. And um, your state is going to have functions for each of the um, the triggers that will work with your state machine. So in our state machine, the trigger is going to be, it's not going to be frame, it's going to be uh, on timer. So we're going to take the timer, which was part of the state machine in our, in our other state machine. Where is it here? This one. Here the timer was a part of the state machine. It, the state machine managed the timer's variable and and it was a condition for transitioning. Well here, urgh, I didn't want to do that. There we go. That's not the one I wanted. That's not the one I wanted. That's the one I wanted. Here, timer is going to be uh, an external object. See, it's a clock. That means it's a timer. And it's going to send messages to the state machine. So instead of, instead of transitioning on frames, we're going to transition on timer messages. That's how that is going to work. So we're going to need a timer class. And we're going to need a bunch of classes for a state machine. A base state class which will define um, all the common behavior between the different states. Basically, it's going to define uh, the on timer function, which will be virtual. And 
and maybe some other stuff. And then we define the um, the concrete classes that will you know determine the behavior of the state machine of of that state uh, in response to messages such as the on timer message. So that is basically how it's going to work. You probably don't really get what I'm talking about because you got to look at the code. We got to go through this. So I want you guys to follow along with Chile. We're going to go on an adventure. I'm going to delete. Mm, I'm going to leave this here just in case. I might want to copy and paste something. Probably not, but you never know. Let's add a new file to our project. The file will be called projects add new item make sure you do, ooh oh I hate you make sure you go to assets because that always fucks me over we want to make a h file and we're gonna call it state mm, we're gonna go pragma once so here's how it's going to work. We need a main a main squeeze here. First of all, let's include game.h. So our main state is going to have to be uh, we're going to call it uh, AI state class AI state it's gonna be public so what function is gonna have well it's gonna have a constructor maybe it is gonna have a constructor um, and it's, it's gonna need a virtual void on timer bam What else? Now, <clears throat> in order, my friends, to um, transition a state, we're going to have to be able to change where this pointer points to. So for that, for that to happen, we're going to need a pointer to the game from the state so that the state can you know, tell the game, hey, change your pointer. So we're going to do this with um, protected. Remember, it has to be protected because if we make it private, then our inherited classes won't be able to touch. Wait a minute. Maybe, maybe that's a good idea, though. I'm going to make this private. I've just had a good idea. I don't have too many of those. I better take advantage of it. Private game we'll make it a reference. The game. Nah, what's it called game? That's stupid. Okay. So now we have pointer back to the game. Here's the thing though. Yeah, I'll get to that when I get to it. Let's do some other stuff. Let's create another state. Do I want to create another state right now? We're going to create a single uh, test state. So we'll call it class test state. Ah, we want public AI state. So we're going to inherit from our AI state class. That's a big daddy. Hmm. Okay. Now. Um, how do we do this? Do it. I'm just gonna fix something here. 
obviously we're going to have to initialize the game uh, reference in the uh, constructor because references have to be initialized as soon as they appear. So game and game. That's fine. That's fine. Public. So we need a a little initializer here for happy times. Not initializer, a constructor. Uh, virtual void on timer. We've got to inherit this one now. In AI state, I'm going to make this equal to zero. And what that means is that this function will not have a definition. It will remain undefined. And if you create an undefined virtual uh, function, which is a pure virtual function, that's what we call it, that means that this class cannot be instantiated. You cannot make an object from this class because it contains a function which is purely virtual, has no concrete implementation. So this class only serves as a, a daddy to make um, baby states from, or baby uh, classes from. And the, uh, the inherited classes will define the function, so they will be concrete classes. This is an abstract class because it contains a pure virtual function. I hope that makes tons of sense to you. Hopefully it will, eventually. And now, so yeah, so far this is what we got. AI state test state. Now we need to make a C file to add the implementation. So let's add a new item. Make C plus plus. We're in assets already. We'll call it state. Because we're being super. I forgot the word I was going to say. Include. No. That was not what I wanted to include. State. Dot H. <sighs> consistent. That's what we're being. Super consistent. Okay. Let's. Uh, we need uh, we need the constructor of AI state here. So AI state AI state game game whip out the colons here and game is initialized with game booyah. So there's our constructor for AI state. Now test state. <clears throat> test state. Game, uh, game. Why does it not like that? Mm. I'm not going to worry about it yet. Here we call the AI state constructor with game, the constructor of the parent, and the constructor of the parent will take care of initializing the game variable because the game variable is defined by the parent, so we should let the parent initialize it. It's a good practice. Also, we can't initialize it ourselves. Why? Because it's private. Game is private, so that means when you inherit uh, from AI state, test state cannot access the game variable. Now you might think this is a problem, and it is, and we'll figure out a way to get around it eventually. But for now, let's not let's not think about it. Let's make another let's make another function. Um. So test, let's call this one void test state test on timer. Bam. No, that's wrong. So let's uh, let's define the on timer function. 
So what this function is going to do is it's just a simple test. We want to test to make sure we can transition. So we're going to transition from a test state to a test state. So how do we do that? Well, we have to, first of all, we have to go to game.h. Yeah. Yeah. I want to clean some shit out here, first of all. Okay, AI move X and Y are good. AI timer is garbage. Le garbage. AI state is garbage. We don't need our uh, AI state enumeration anymore. Do AI turn. That's fine. I guess we'll leave that. Get next move smart play line. That's all good. Let's go here. No. I meant here. Let's clean out some more garbage. Where is our garbage is garbage is all that's garbage. Okay, we don't need state or timer anymore because we deleted them. Ugly faces from the galaxy. What else do we not need? We don't need any of this bullshit. Because it's not valid anymore. Now... Um, 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 let's build it. I want to make sure it builds at this stage. It builds. It won't work, but it builds. Now we want to introduce our state stuff into our game. So we go include. Maybe some of you are already uh, groaning here because you know what's going to happen. But if you don't know, I'm going to tell you. Where's state dot h? So we include state into here. And that will let us access our state variable stuff. So let's add a pointer. AI state pointer to state. Hmm. Now... We're going to initialize the state. Where? In games. Thingamajigger. Here. So we're going to go state. New. AI state. Bam. Now we're already getting guff here. See, I included. AI state, or I included state.h into game.h, so now I should be able to access this, but it's not letting me do it. Oh, wait. This is interesting. It says object of abstract class type AI state not allowed, which is what I was talking about before because uh, state has a pure virtual function, it's abstract, you're not allowed to make an object. So I was doing something stupid. Let's make a concrete class, which is test state. And I can do that. And it wants a uh, wants a reference to game, so I'm just going to use this. And that will allow me to that'll give us a, re a reference to this game object. So it'll point to its owner, its master. Does that work? I'm thinking it probably will not work. Yeah, it doesn't work. Does not work. Why doesn't it work? Well, it's because of a little problem we got here. Wait, let me look at uh, state.cpp. Okay, that's good. We have a problem, Houston. And the name of the problem is circular dependency. You see, state.h includes game.h, but game.h includes state.h. And this is not good. This is not a good situation to be in. So, uh, 
how to explain this situation to you guys because it's kind of freaking really complicated but I have to explain it because it's a problem that will come up when you're making games so I can't just gloss over it which is what I want to do but I can't got that so let's see what happens okay so what what happens when we compile game.cpp because I think that's the first one that actually gets fucked over game.cpp State.cpp. State.cpp does not come up here. Just game.cpp. So, what happens when we try to um, include, or when we try to compile game.cpp? Well, we skip past this because it's bullshit, and we get to the first um, preprocessor declaration or imperative or something, and it says include game.h. So, let's do that. Let's do it right now. Let's go to game.h. Copy this mother. Control all. Control copy. And put it right here. Bam! So now we got game.h chilling out in the middle of game.cpp. So we include that. And we pragmud once for this. So we cannot include game. Um, H again because that would be stupid if you include the same file twice you're going to get uh, multiple redeclaration and your uh, compiler is going to throw a hissy fit and shit the bed so next thing well we include D3D graphics I'm going to skip it, that copy and paste and we include keyboard I'm going to skip that too and then we include state so let's include state now. We'll go to state.h. This one's smaller. That's what she said. And uh, we're going to include it here. And this is also pragma once, so now it cannot be included again in the same CPP file. And what happens when we include um, state.h? and then we uh, try to continue we get an include game.h but wait we just included game.h right here so fuck we can't include it again because we pragma once it so this is ignored and we continue we try to we're the, the compiler is looking at this shit okay we're gonna create a new class that's cool um... the class is gonna have a um... it's gonna have a constructor and the constructor takes uh, what the fuck is this? What is this bullshit? I never seen this shit before in my fucking life, man. You're fucking off your rocker, missing. We we don't know what this game shit is. Uh, now you're trying to hit me with your fucking semicolons. No way, man. You can't fucking semicolon out of this shit. You gotta explain yourself. That's what the compiler is saying right now, because it doesn't know what game is. Because up until now, it hasn't seen a fucking game. Game comes later. See, we included under we included this game here because we uh, wanted it to know what game was, so we could you know use it here. But we already included game. Then we included um, because game dot h had an include for state. We included state. And so we couldn't include game again, so we'll never be able to know what game is. That's the thing, you never get to it, because they're including each other, and then they're excluding each other with pragmas. You end up with a situation where you never learn, you can't learn what game is before you use it. And that is why circular dependencies are the fucking, oh, tear your hair out, man. And I'm talking about your pubic hair. So, what happens? Well, first of all, I gotta undo that shit, otherwise I'll be fucked. Mm, redo that. How do we deal with this bullshit? Because the bullshit needs to be dealt with. Oh, yes. It will be dealt with. And by deal, I mean dealt. Ugh. So, how we solve this problem is very simple 
we can't include game here because if we do that we just get that thing where uh, game.cpp
it says test state is our friend so it can access our private variables now this is a very dangerous statement because this can break all the encapsulation that we're working to build with objects and stuff so you have to be careful when you're using friend you can't just say I want something to access something else and I don't want to think of a good way to do it so I'm just gonna make it friend there are certain situations where it's good and there are lots of situations where it's bad now why do I think it's okay in this situation well basically this state machine is really a part of the game it's just a it's just a little aspect of the game that we've separated into a different class but like before when we had it as a uh, switch it was all in this game in a function of the uh, the game class and we've just moved that out into a separate class but really it's still a part of this so it should still be able to access its variables that is my um, my rationalization of this step here but in general you want to avoid making friends friends are bad they will betray you in the end these are deep thoughts by Chile now if we try to do this shit it's all good we can do this all we want create new states delete old states is this gonna crash my game because I think it might crash it didn't crash hopefully it's not leaking memory like a sieve so yeah now we can uh, transition states and that's good I just really wish there was a way to um, to keep the game reference private and then make like a transition function but this creation thing here needs game in order to work I know how I can do it but should I do it right now is this gonna confuse you guys cuz I think it's gonna confuse you do you get why I can't make um, game now I'm asking you questions like you're gonna answer me but I hope you understand the reason why I can't make game um, private at this point it's because in the child classes here we have to be able to create the new state in the child we can't create it in the parent because the parent doesn't know what kind of state we're gonna be creating so the new state has to be created in the child but to create a new state you need the pointer to the game object and if that is private child can't access it so the child cannot create the new state so here is my brilliant solution and we're gonna go in the parent here and uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new constructor and it's gonna be a copy constructor that will copy from another AI state uh, state and this constructor let's just go here Bow. Bow, bow. and we got AI state wait this should be constant and here we go game is initialized with oh gotta change that state state dot game now this works because now the child when it creates a new state it doesn't have to access game it can just pass it a reference of itself 
pointer to this, it passes a reference to itself, and that will trigger this constructor, which will copy game from the from this from the calling class. But because it's doing it in the parent version, it's allowed to access game there. So we keep the game access inside of the parent. And that will allow us to do make this private. Still causes problems, but these problems we can fix. Now it doesn't like that we're accessing it here to um, to change the game object here. We're changing game here. We're setting it to the new state. So instead, we're going to uh, create a function. We're going to do what I was going to do before. We're going to go into state.h. And we're going to create a protected called tran void transition. And here, we go AI state transition. Hold on, I'll avoid that. Void AI state transition. And what is this one going to be? Um, AI state pointer to new state. So I lied. I lied through my lying lie hole. This one's got to be like this with a semicolon. Now, here, we're allowed to access game because we're in the parent, so we can go game dot state is equal to new state delete this, right? Because if the child calls this, it'll be the child that gets deleted. Because there is no objects for the parent it's just that this um, function is defined in the parent, but it also exists in the child. So when the child calls it, the child will be deleted. Now, AI state transition... Uh, why is this bad? Oh, because AI state isn't a uh, friend. It's the it's test state that's the friend. Well, we can change that. We'll go into game.cpp. We'll change this to AI state. And also, if you declare friend, if you declare a parent class as the friend, the child classes do not automatically get to be friends. So check this out. Now this one's nasty. Now this one's saying, hey, what's going on? So, delete. Yeah, that should be fine. So now all we gotta do is we call transition to the new state. And that's it. And now we beautifully hide access to the game from the child. The child cannot access the game, only the parent can access the game. Build a solution, and it works. So, ah, that makes me feel good. I feel all good inside. These are the kind of things that. Uh, are good. <laughs> uh. So now we have our test state, public AI state. Right, 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 right. Now we can uh, begin to create our uh, state machine. We've got the basics done. We compile it. Everything works. We've worked out all the irons. Now we got to make the actual real state machine that does something. So, um, I think it's a good point here just for me to stop and take a quick break, which will be no break at all for you guys. See you in exactly one or two seconds. So, after a delicious shower and a refreshing peanut butter sandwich, I am back. 
Uh, still got a raging hard erection about this uh, this data hiding that I managed to do here. Loving it. This stuff doesn't get you. This stuff doesn't turn you on. Then I don't know what does, man. I don't know what does. So now we gotta get to the main event, which is uh, where's my thing? Not that thing. This thing. We gotta implement these. Um, these are what you might call it. These derived uh, classes, the states of the state machine. So first one is gonna be the calc state, <clears throat> and that's gotta go from last one here. Actually, what I'm gonna do is I am gonna create all of the skeletons of uh, the classes, all the basic uh, bare bones stuff. And after that, we'll get to the action. So, yeah, just uh, in a short bit, I'll be back. And presto changeo, here is all of our classes. Calc state, think state, move state, move x state, move y state, and place state. <clears throat> so that's the basics of uh, their declarations. Now we got to get into the nitty gritties. So let's take a look at uh, what do we got here? Calc state. Hmm. Would help us if we could look at our state machine here. So in the calc, on the frame, of course now we don't have frame anymore. Frame is not going to be the trigger, it's going to be the timer. So in the calc state, all we do is we transition to the think state, basically immediately. And uh, what do we do here? We set the timer to 60 and we get the next move. So let's do this. Uh, on timer. Hmm. Now here's the problem, right? You can't get the next move if uh, we are, you know. can't access the the, uh, the game variable to get the next move, right? Hmm, that's a problem. On timer. So, what we're going to do... State.h, here we go. We're going to create a new function that will allow the children to access uh, the uh, game function of get next move. So we're going to do calculate move. There and here. I'm going to go void AI state like that. Oh, what did I do? We'll see. And we'll just do that. Calculate move. And that would be game dot AI get next move smart. That's what it's called, isn't it? Uh, but we need current player so game dot current wait what what's the name of the current player active player that's what it is this is why it's good to name your shit consistently hmm get next move smart active player so that will calculate the move for us. 
but we also need another one. We got to be able to set the timer, right? We don't have a timer. This timer doesn't count. This is a different timer. We want a frame timer. So we're going to go to state.h and we're going to create a timer down here. Call it frame timer. <clears throat> we're going to call it uh, AI timer because that's what it really is. Public AI timer. We don't need anything there. Uh, what else? Public tick. That's every time a frame happens. Call tick. Private AI state pointer to pointer state. I'll explain later why I need a double pointer. I'll explain that at the end, so don't worry about it now. Just know that we need a, a pointer to a pointer to an AI state object. All right. So now we have an AI timer. Ah, oh, we also need a uh, function called void set uh, set count int c. I guess I'll call it whatever. Whatever. Mm. I could just define the shit in here, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna play nice. So now we have the definition of the timer. We'll flesh it out later. State.cpp. Okay. Now what we have is in game. We want to add a timer here. So AI timer. Timer. How's that? Good. Now I lied about the timer here. Where's my there it is. This function, this constructor is gonna need a uh, AI state pointer pointer. Wait, it's gonna need a pointer? Pointer to a pointer. State in its constructor. And in the game cpp we'll go to the constructor here You're following along you got to keep up this is no longer valid let's get rid of that we're just gonna initialize state while we're at it to null which is not proper in this version null so it's gonna start off pointing to nothing and we're gonna do what? We're gonna go timer and we're gonna give it a pointer to the address of state. So the state pointer, there's a state pointer inside the game object and the timer's pointer points to that pointer which will eventually point to whatever state object there is. And if that doesn't make sense, which it probably doesn't, don't worry, I will explain it later, unless I forget, in which case, eh, you can ask me a question on the forum. But if you can't figure out what, why I made it a pointer to a pointer, don't worry about it, just let's keep going. It's not that important, and I'll explain it later. So, <clears throat> we got our calculate move, we got our transition, we need a new function, void set time int C set timer. So here we go. State.cpp. Now I think that's pretty much all the functions we need in the parent for accessing the uh, the game object. Where is my thingamajig? Calc state. Here it is. So on timer, 
we want to calculate move and we want to set time er what time should we set it at 60 might be some problems later but we'll deal with them when we get to them so on this one because the timer is outside of the uh, outside of the state machine we don't have to worry about decrementing the timer that's we can forget about all that shit we just gotta worry about when the timer is less than zero we move to the next state so the think state is also super simple oh I almost forgot something here on timer we gotta calculate and move we gotta set timer and we've got to transition to new think state reference to this yeah is that correct what's wrong no instance of constructor think state matches the argument list did I copy the wrong constructor for some reason Ooh, that is bad. I did something stupid. How did that happen? I don't even remember what I was typing anymore. But I have to replace all these games. Hmm. Can I do it? replace uh, quick replace game with uh, state AI state it's not gonna replace anything bad is it five occurrences I think that's all then I want to replace uh, small game no small game with small state place all does that work then i want to go into state.h and i want to replace do the same stuff I guess oh god state state game with sm state and small game with small state let's try that place game with state five place small game with small state hey that's cool it remembered wait uh, big game with big state replace okay ah I didn't want to do that now I fucked it up real good AI state that's what I wanted to do I don't know how I fucked it up in the beginning though because I was just copying from the first one the first one was supposedly correct. How's that? Is that good? Do you like that? Okay, I did I did this one properly, so at least that's there. Okay, so that should be working now. <sighs> what was I in the middle of before I fucked something up here? Ah, I was doing this shit. Okay, it's all set now. So the calc state handling function is all good. Now think state is even simpler. All it does is transition once the timer runs out. So transition to new move x state to this. That's all we do. Because that's how we do. All right. Now this one we have a we have a choice. Right? We have three options. We can either uh, increment, decrement or transition. So, if 
Oh, here we go. Here's another problem. We have to be able to access the move x and y and the current x and y. Oh, man. This deal is getting worse and worse all the time. So I have the choice now of adding more functions to the, the uh, parent here or making all the children friends of uh, game. I'm not going to make them all friends, but yeah, I don't like this solution either. Int. Uh, compare. Now we'll do bool. Bool. X is too small. Bool X is too big. Bool Y is too small. Bool Y is too big. Hmm, I forgot about this. Yeah, you got to be able to access all that other shizzle, shizzle-mazzle. Okay, now I'm just talking stupid. Where is my AI state bullshit? Here it is. Let's add these mothers. AI state x is too big. Const. I don't know if I'm supposed to add the const here too. Hmm. Declaration is incompatible. Ah, bool. That is correct. And we'll do uh, cur game dot cursor x. Cursor x is greater than game dot move. AI move x. Yeah. And let's return that. Return. Now, I should be able to do this super sneaky like. Kind of. Too small. Then we'll go here. Find and replace. Replace X with Y. Good. Then we'll make this one. No, shut up. Make it small and do that. Okay. <clears throat> so, hopefully, that's the last function I have to create in the parent. Now, here. Hmm, move state. If that's wrong, X is too big. Oh, you gotta be shitting me, man. I'm getting super pissed off now. I should have just made them all friends. I regret this decision. So much con so much functions to make in the parent. Hmm, void. I'm going to say add to x int value and void add to y int value. Uh, 
I regret. I regret everything! Here I thought I was being so awesome, awesomely clever being able to hide the game from the, the children. Alright, and... Oh wait, I can't do that. I gotta do this. Int value. And here we have game dot cursor x plus and e and equals value. Control C, Control V, add to my and this one is Y. Whew. This better be the last one. My patience is growing incredibly thin. So if X is too big, wrong button, add 2X, negative 1. Else if X is too small, add 2X, positive 1. Else, if it's just right, transition to a new move Y state, this, copy from this, all right, now here's the thing. We don't just want to add, just want to increment and decrement in these ones. If we remember our state diagram, if we remember our state diagram, we also have to set up the timer in this, in this situation here. Hmm. I feel like I want to set the timer here too. No, because we're just after the thinking weight, so that's fine. Set the timer. Yeah. So here we set the timer. Set timer to 15 mil. Oh no, it's it's milliseconds, so it should be No, it's this is a frame timer, so it's fine. I was thinking about sleep for a second there. Brain fart. Set timer 15. And here we do not set the timer. We just transition. So that is the handling of a timer event in the move x state where the actual animation is going on in the x direction and it should be super similar in the move y state here except everything is y so y is too big add to y so let's find and replace x with y we're already set up four occurrences beautiful so if y is too big add negative one to y if y is too small add one to y set your timers and otherwise transition transmolition but we want to transition to place plaque there you go. And finally, in the place state, where's my mother? My mother trucking. There it is. What do we got here? Ah, so when we transition from move Y to place, we should probably set the timer. I'm gonna set it to 30. But we gotta set it before. Transition has to be the last thing you do because the transition function deletes the object. So make sure you're not doing anything after transition. Always good. And what are we doing here? Set timer 30.
in here, when the timer goes off in the place state, we want to... I gotta add another function. Fuck a mama car. We gotta place void place mark. Yeah. I don't like it any more than you do. But this one isn't so bad because we don't have to add like a whole bunch of accessor functions. State.cpp void place mark what time is it? I've got about 10 minutes before I gotta get ready to go. That's wrong. It should be AI state place mark Hmm, nothing. Nothing and nobody. And what do we do here? We go game dot set square state AI move X AI move Y which is game dot because we're not we we aren't personally the game so we gotta use our game reference game dot y game dot active player and then game dot end turn and that should be it. Oh yeah, but in no no no. Never mind. Yeah, when we place mark, we set the square state and turn. That's good, that's good, that's good. That's real good. Then we do uh place mark. Hmm. Transition null. So that what that what that will do is that will delete this uh, state object and set the pointer to null, which is nice because when we're finished with the state, when the state machine finishes, it's going to delete its own state and reset the pointer to null. The pointer being null is the way that the uh, game object will know that the state machine hasn't started, is in the unstarted state. So, that's a lot of bullshit. Wouldn't you say? Let's add some more bullshit. Because we need to add the functions for our good old friend, Mr. Timer. Void. Timer. Fuck that. Timer. Timer. Ah, I got it. Now I figured it out. It's AI timer. AI timer. And it is AI state. Double pointer to the state. 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 Mm. count is uh, I don't know, zero seems like a fair enough count to start off with is it count or is it something non-static data member or base classified well shit, what is AI timers variable called doesn't have one, well that's a problem int count there. Now we need tick and set count. So state.cpp AI timer. Copy that. Void. That's bullshit. Tick. Count minus minus. If count is less than or equal to zero.
state a dereference state here. Can I do this? Wrong. Nope, can't do it. Gotta do it like this. So first I dereference state. So it goes from a pointer to pointer to just a normal pointer. And then I use that pointer to access the state variable. And I call on timer, which is the only unprotected member, really. And then I do this. And then I do this. Count minus minus. If count is less than zero, call on timer. That seems good. Void. AI timer. Set count. Int, int C. Count is equal to C. How's that? That's good. All right. Now we have all our bullshit set up. Let's see if it compiles first of all before we actually integrate it into the game object. So it doesn't compile, but it gets pretty close. Set timer int unresolved external symbol. Why is that? Unstate.object. Set count. Set timer. Oh, okay, set timer. I guess I must have not put it in here somewhere. Void AI state set timer in C mm, game dot timer timer dot set count C. There. Seems good to me. Hmm. Let's build that mother. Good. All right. Now the final step is we got to integrate this bullshit into the actual uh, game.cpp. We got to make it. Uh, we got to make the timer run, and then the timer will call this the uh, the state machine, and the state machine will do stuff back on the game. But I am out of time right now, so I'm gonna stop the video and in maybe a day or two for me and one or two seconds for you we will uh, we will proceed with the exciting conclusion of the state machine slash polymorphism fus fuster cluck yes so see you very soon or in a couple days depending on your point of view all right let's finish up this bullshit uh, it's been about four days now, and I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing here. But hell, that's never stopped me before, right? So let's get on with it. Now, I lied when I said I don't have any idea. I, I remember that we finished up uh, defining the state classes and the timer class. So now what's left is to integrate this bullshit into the game class. Mm. So we already got the variables defined here, or declared. Now we gotta just work on the code. Game.cpp. Oh yeah, but there was one thing. Uh, I want to just quickly go over here. Where is it? So yeah, in the uh, in the current situation, the current model that we have here. By the way, I lost all the diagrams I made before. I mean, the you know the little additions I made to this diagram before. That's all gone now. So whatever. What happens is uh, we start off. Well, let's say we got the game object here. Game. And it's got a pointer, pointer to a state object, right? And that's going to point to whatever state we have. It might be it might be a think state, or whatever. It points to the current state of the AI. And when it's how this works is when this is on the uh, on the player's turn, right? This points to nothing it's just null 
And when it, the AI, AI's turn starts, we've got to create a uh, a state and a state object, and then we make this pointer point to that object. And that's the the AI's turn proceeds. And when it's finished, we delete the uh, state object. We delete. I guess it would be the place object. That would be the last one before we finish. And we delete that, and then we make the uh, the pointer point to null again. I don't like that. I don't like that situation of having null pointer and having to manage it. Part of it is nasty because the way I did it was I made the uh, the place object when it transitions out of the state machine. Where's my thing? Here it is. Where's state? Uh, where is it? Move and place. So yeah, when it transitions out, it uh, sets it as null. So basically, the the responsibility for setting it at the end is in the uh, the state objects. But in the beginning, the responsibility for creating the first state on every AI turn falls to uh, the game. The game will have to create it here if it's not already created and it'll have to manage that. I don't like having the management outside, partially outside, partially inside the uh, the state object group. So I'm gonna change this diagram here. We're not gonna head off into the sunset after we uh, hit the place state or we finish the place state so on this condition here we're gonna go here remember I modified this in the last video I I made all the other shit but whatever you remember it so yeah when the timer counts down we're going over here Oh yeah, I think in the other diagram, I think I showed you that uh, that it's in the the, uh, the what you call it the transitions. They're not they're not on frame anymore. It's just on the timer event. So you can sort of ignore some of this stuff because it's outdated. But whatever, you get the idea. Now we're going in a kind of like a circular motion where we uh, when the AI's turn is finished, we return it to the calculation state in preparation for the next AI turn. That's the way we're going to program this mother. Because that's... Because Chili says so! So... We gotta just do a quick little fixer upper on here. Where is our... Uh... So here we don't, we don't transition to no. We transition to... A new uh, calculation state, I guess. So new calc state, good. Point. Do you reference pointer this? Yeah. And we gotta set the timer. Is it set timer? It is set timer to one. and that will get it ready for the next AI turn. Wait, place state transition set timer. Place mark ends the turn, I believe. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So, that should be that. Now, let's do the thing that I said we was going to do. Hmm. So, on do AI turn. Okay. Before I forget, when we initialize this, we've got to initialize it to what? What? Um, 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 uh, new calc state, and this time. Hmm, wait a minute. We have an AI state and we have 
constant calc state. Hmm. We need to give calc state a way of being initialized without having an, another state to copy from. Obviously, because in the very beginning, we don't have any states. So, where's calc state? Hmm. <laughs> Let's add another constructor here. Calc state game reference game. You like that, don't you? Yeah, you do. No red squigglies for me today. So where's my calc state stuff? Where is it? No, it's not there. Play state, move state, calc state. Let's copy this. And we'll do game. And this one is also game. And game. Oh, wait. No, that's not right. It's uh, AI state game because we do have that constructor set up here and that will enable us to construct our calc state object our very first one using game hmm. wrong using this hmm which is not technically supposed to be something you should do, I think. We got a warning about that before. Not using the this pointer thing in here. But it should be fine. I'm going to say it's fine because I know stuff. I know things. <clears throat> my Apparently my voice is breaking too. So, now we've got our uh, calc state thing set up all good and stuff. So on the AI turn what we want to do is just one thing. We only do one thing and that one thing is um, timer dot tick. That's it. That's all we gotta do in this function. Everything else is taken care of in our classes because I hesitate to say this now because I'm probably wrong. I get these feelings. Mm. This is not going to work the first time because it never works the first time. And I, I hesitate to start debugging because I'm going to look foolish for it not working. But let's do it anyways. Go. Oh, boo. Boo earns. Break. Okay, so. Hmm. Right. AI timer. Count. What, what's our call? What's our call stack looking like here? Well, you guys have gotten a little uh, impromptu lesson on debugging. So, on timer, tick. Now, obviously, tick was working for a while, right? Oh, I think I know why this happened. I think I know why this happened. We probably called tick after we deleted, because remember, it crashed right before it was going to put that uh, mark down. And the reason was probably because that was the very point when we deleted something. And pointers became invalid. So, do AI turn. Tick. 
calls on timer for place state, which is fine. Place mark. What does place mark do? Set timer. Set count. So if we try to transition after, okay, yeah, that's not going to work, is it? Yeah, I did a stupid. I probably even said in the last tutorial, never do this. And not the last tutorial, the last video, which is this video. It's just the last time I was recording this video. I said, never do this because that would be stupid. And then I went and did it four days later. Yeah, because when you call transition, it deletes the current object and then anything you do after that is going to be working on data that probably doesn't exist anymore which is usually not a good thing it's usually not the best thing you can do so you want to do your work and transition at the very end see functions like this transition function they're kind of sketchy I'm kind of doing something a little sketchy here because objects deleting themselves is sort of a recipe for disaster if you're not careful Luckily, this wasn't too bad a situation. I figured it out pretty quickly. And that's how you use the call stack in debugging. See, I planned it like this so that you guys would... I could show you guys stuff. It's not like I fucked it up on accident or anything. Because that would be highly improbable. Okay, let's uh, build this mother again. And let's see it fail again. In all likelihood. Because, I mean, come on, who, who are we getting here? Oh, it works! Kind of works! Kind of works pretty good, actually. Man, I can't believe that worked. Why did... Oh, okay, never mind. I am sort of surprised at how uh, painless that was. Um, yeah. So, I mean, really, that's it. The actual code that we put in the game uh, file itself was super small. Just add the tick there. And uh, add the, uh, the thing here that creates the first state object. And after that, it just runs itself. And that's how it sh usually works when you're when you're getting into object-oriented programming. The final code at your top-level functions gets like super tiny and nothing. Mm, that was stupid. But anyways, yeah, it gets just super simplified, and everything, all the work gets done inside the objects themselves. That's the way it should be. So I got. I hope you guys know why we only need this one function. It is because of stuff that I will explain now. So we have, I think I promised you guys I'd explain why we need the double pointer. And we need the double pointer because we got our game object, right? And it's got a bunch of bullshit, but it also has pointer to state state and it has the uh, ugh, I need more space in my object. It's got a pointer to state and it's got a timer. Timer and the timer has pointer pointer state, right? And then you got your state object, whatever the fuck it is at the moment. Let's say it's calc, right? Your pointer to state points to calc, okay? Calc has trapped inside it a state uh, state object, right? Because it's when it inhi inherits from AI state, it gets everything AI state has inside of it. And inside there is a private game pointer. Calc can't access it directly, but it has 
inherited functions, protected functions, that allows it to access the private pointer here. And this pointer points back to game. And this is for a variety of reasons. One of the most important reasons is when we want to change the state, um, the state of the AI move, we have to change what this pointer points to. So calc has to create a new state, call it uh, think, and then it has to change this pointer here to point to the new state. And in order to be able to change that pointer, it needs access, it needs a reference to the game object. So that's why we have this. So whenever we have a state transition, the current state creates the new state object, makes the state pointer point to the new state object, and then commits seppuku and kills itself. Rawr. Rawr. And of course, this one has inside of it an, a, its own pointer that it copied from the previous state. And blah blah blah. So, to answer the other question, why isn't just why don't we just have a why do we have a double pointer here? Why don't we just point to this? The answer to that question is because if we transition state to uh, the next state, move x, then I drop my pen. Create so transitioning state means creating the new state object, and then making the pointer point to the new state object and then deleting this object making it garbage and this isn't a pointer anymore it's just garbage Brr. yes I must erase this line completely now we have a bad situation because yeah the pointer the state pointer points to the new state but the timers pointer because this isn't a pointer to pointer it's just a normal pointer it points to the garbage that was deleted, and that's fucked up. And we don't want to have to have the object change the state pointer, and then change the the private pointer inside of timer to also point to itself. That would be stupid. So instead, we kill two birds with one stone. If I can get rid of that there. And we have... A pointer to pointer we have this pointer point to this one so now whenever the the game's state pointer changes the timer will also point to the direct thing because it's pointing to the correct pointer instead of pointing to the object directly point to the pointer you only have to update one pointer then and you get stuff which is good yeah so that's why that happens and that's how this works so you have your timer, and you call tick. You call tick. What am I? What am I even trying to write here? I don't know anymore. You call tick, and tick. If the if the the uh, the tick the 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 count counts down to zero or one, I think it's zero, then tick will automatically call whatever the current. Uh, state object is it will call that objects on timer function and that will do some sh crazy shit so all you need is one call to tick that tick will at the appropriate time trigger an on timer and that on timer will trigger um, the current state object to do stuff to the game or and or transition to a new state and all our happy good stuff will be done. And that, my friends, is how to make a state machine using full-on hardcore um, stuff. What's, what was I thinking of again? Programming? Polymorphism? Polymorphism? Or, uh, what's, the, what's the other word I was looking for? I can't remember what it's called. Whatever. That's how you do it. And that is one application of virtual functions, pure virtual functions, 
abstract classes, inheritance, all that crazy uh, object-oriented bullshit. That makes C++ so sexy. So sexy. Oh, I want to rub my body. This tutorial is going downhill real fast. I need to really record these things in one, one go because it's lacking continuity. And I'm losing my mind, which also is a problem. So yeah, in the next lesson, we'll actually uh, make progress with the, uh, what do you call it? The game thing, platformer game thing. So yeah, that was State Machines. It's kind of cool, but not really. I hope you guys understand a little bit more about making classes now. Just remember that uh, it's not like I when I cover classes once, I you're supposed to be able to know everything. And if you don't, if you still have like, you don't know really how to use classes, and you're just doing it wrong. That's not true. This is a this is a pro a process, right? So as I show you things, you you learn a little bit more about how classes work. You get a little bit more insight into how to use them yourself. But uh, it's going to take a while. It's going to take a bunch of examples. I'm going to throw a bunch of stuff at you. Some of it will stick. Some of it will fall to the ground. Eventually, you will be coated in gooey goodness from Chile. So, yeah. I think that's the last thing, unless I think of something else. In which case, I will record it and tack it on in the end with the magic of post-processing. Good night.